In this tutorial, we'll pay tribute to the iconic style of the Rolling Stone using both Adobe InDesign and Adobe Photoshop. Make sure to check out the tutorial assets so you can follow along. Now, let's get started. To begin, let's go into Adobe InDesign and create a new document. We want a width of 8.5 inches and a height of 11 inches. Uncheck Facing Pages. Add a margin of 0 0.3125 inches to all sides. And add a bleed of 0 0.25 inches to all sides. Then click Create. Now let's take a look at our layers. If you don't see the Layers panel, go to Window, Layers. We need four layers here. Let's call one Type in Front and make it red. Let's call the next one Photo in Front and make it green. Let's call the next one Type Behind and make it blue. And finally, let's call the last one Photo Behind and make it green. Now that we have all of our layers, let's lock all of them except for the Type Behind layer. Open up your swatches. If you don't see them, go to Window, Color, Swatches. Choose New Color Swatch from the panel's drop down menu. Let's name this new swatch Rolling Stone Red. Set the cyan to 0. Set the magenta to 100. Set the yellow to 93. Set the black to 0. And then click OK. Using the text tool, let's create a text frame at the top of the page for our title. Then, Let's type in a title. I'm going to type Heaven's Door as my title. Use either the options at the top of your screen or the character panel to assign or change a font. You can find the character panel by going Window, Type in Tables, Character. So let's change that font to Redura Bold. Let's also change the size so it fits the space at the top of our cover. Experiment with the tracking or letter spacing and kerning or spacing between individual letters to pull the letters together and make it look more logo-like. Now let's use the swatch we made to make this type red. Select the type and then select the color from our swatches. Simple, right? Next, let's give the text a stroke color. Check out our foreground and background colors here in our tools. If we click this T right here, we can switch the colors applicable to our type. I'm going to click here to give the stroke focus, and I'm going to choose the paper color here in my swatches as my color choice. Then let's up that stroke size in our stroke panel. You can find it by going to Window, Stroke. Let's set that stroke weight to 5 points. Now let's copy what we've done here in this text box and paste it in place. Let's do this slowly to show you how it's done. First, I'll copy this text by going Edit, Copy. Then I'll go to Edit, Paste in Place. Let's use our arrow keys to move this copy a little bit down and a little bit to the right. Then, let's change both the font color and the font stroke to black. Come back down here to the Tools panel and use your swatches to do so. Now, let's send this to the back. Right-click on PC or Control-click on Mac, and then select Arrange, Send to Back. Looking good, right? Now, let's add some text to the top of our layout. This would be something like the artists featured in the issue. Use any names that you like. Then, set the font to Carol Bold Round. 
Next, let's turn to Adobe Photoshop. I'm already in Photoshop over here, and I've got the example tutorial portrait open. Let's start off by duplicating the background layer. Next, we need to select the subject. You could do this with the lasso tool, for example. However, my hands can get a little shaky when I don't have a tablet handy. I like to use the quick selection tool for this. Use whichever you prefer to get the job done. Refine Edge has since been renamed to Select and Mask, so let's click on that up in the options bar to refine our work. Check Smart Radius, and you can adjust this radius slider to get the selection more accurate around the silhouette of the portrait. Click OK when you're happy with your outcome. Now let's copy by going to Edit, Copy, and then let's paste by going Edit, Paste. Now we have our isolated portrait on a new layer. Let's hide our two other layers here, so only this one with a transparent background is visible. Then, save your work so we can import it into InDesign. However, before we jump back into InDesign, let's save a second copy with the background elements turned on. Once you've saved two versions of this photo, head back to Adobe InDesign. First, back in InDesign, let's navigate to the layer called Photo Behind. Unlock this one and make sure the other layers are locked. Let's use the Rectangle Frame tool to make a frame that's the size of our entire cover. Then, let's place our image with the background. Go to File, Place to do so. Navigate to your image, select it, and there you go. Let's scale and position the image just how we'd like it. Next, let's look at our layers again. See how we have our PSD here? Select it and then click on the Create New Layer icon to duplicate it. Let's unlock the photo front layer and then drag this copy to this layer. Let's lock up the photo behind layer. Now let's select the frame holding our image in this photo front layer. Then go to File, Place, and we'll select our other PSD that doesn't have a background. And there you have it, we've got our background, but it also looks like the text is sitting in between the background and the subject. So now let's add more typography to our layout. As you might have guessed, let's look at our layers again. We want to work on type in front this time. Let's lock up the other layers and unlock this one. I'm going to use the text tool to type out the name James. I want my font to be black velvet too. And let's go with that bright red swatch we created earlier. I'm going to copy and paste this text and then edit it using the text tool to write out a last name too. In this case, the last name is Knight. Let's use the Move tool to position the type. Once you're happy with the position, let's select them both and add a slight drop shadow. Right-click on PC or Control-click on Mac and select Effects, Drop Shadow. Set the opacity here to around 30% and add around 15% noise. We want the blending mode to be Multiply and the color to be black. Let's try out some additional type, too. We want this bit of text here to say James Knight is the new King of Soul, so let's try to do this in a visually interesting way. I'm adding some type here and experimenting with the font and the color. I'm using the swatch paper, and I'm going to use the font Valesco Serif and Addington CF Medium Italic. Note, there's no wrong answer here, but you're welcome to mimic what I'm doing here if you prefer. Once I've laid out this type, I'm going to add a drop shadow again, same process. Right click on PC, control click on Mac, effects, drop shadow. Not sure what to choose when it comes to these effects? Toggle preview on to preview how these values change the outcome. I'm working with the same values as before. Let's add even more type. 
Variation can create additional interest, but notice how we're doing so in a way that visually relates to the face. This time, I'm going to use the font Carol Bold Round in black. Let's try out a divider here too, using the line tool. First, let's make sure our stroke color is black. Then, let's draw a line here, above our type. We can change how this stroke looks in our stroke panel. Don't see it? Go to Window, Stroke. I'm going to change this stroke, here in the drop down, Thin to Thick. And let's set the weight to 13 pixels. The key here is to work with varied fonts. Don't be afraid to experiment. However, in this case, I'm going to stick to black as the font color, regardless of changes in scale and style. Try to keep in mind that we're working with the imagery here and not against it. If you want to have one part of the text really stand out, it's a good idea to place it in its own box. Let's try this text as an example. Notice how it says, Get Reflective. Well, let's literally make some reflected type. I've created the words Get Reflective underneath the original instance, each in its own text box. Let's start by selecting them both, then right-clicking on PC or Control-clicking on Mac, and selecting Transform, Flip, Vertical. Now line this text up so it looks like a reflection. We can also turn the opacity down, select the type, and then let's go to Effects again, do your right-clicking on PC or Control on Mac, Effects, Transparency. Let's set the opacity to 75%. So let's try out one more unusual type treatment. Take a look at our layers, and let's go to Type Behind. Lock all the other layers, and let's unlock this one. Next, let's use the Rectangle tool to make a rectangle. Looking at our Stroke panel, again, that's Window, Stroke, if you don't see it, let's give it that thick, thin type style again so it matches the rest of our cover. Now, we can get creative with some type here using the Text tool. Velasco Serif is a really fun one for this. Remember, you can break things up into multiple text boxes. The choice is yours there. We can also use our red swatch to draw extra attention to keywords. I'm going to try this here. And there you have it. We've created a tribute Rolling Stone inspired cover. If you'd like to share your work, you can go to File, Export, and choose from a variety of output options. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thanks so much for watching and happy designing.